Shafkat Rachmanov is skeptical of Bilal Muhammad's assertion that he'll be fully recovered and ready to defend his welterweight title within six weeks. Their anticipated championship showdown was originally slated for UFC 310 on December 7, where Muhammad was expected to put his title on the line against the surging Rachmanov. However, those plans were sidelined after Muhammad suffered a bone infection in his foot. Now, despite Muhammad's reassurances, Rachmanov has raised doubts, suggesting that the UFC should instead consider an interim title fight for the year-end event. On a recent appearance on the Ariel Helwani show, Rachmanov voiced his skepticism, explaining why he doubts Muhammad's timeline for recovery. Yeah, I don't believe it's gonna be six weeks, to be honest, Rachmanov said through a translator. He pointed to UFC welterweight Jack Della Maddalena's experience with a similar infection, which has kept him sidelined much longer than anticipated. Rachmanov believes this kind of setback is unpredictable and could easily extend beyond six weeks, making Muhammad's confidence in his recovery overly optimistic. Bilal doesn't need to be greedy, Rachmanov added, noting that an interim title wouldn't diminish Muhammad's championship status. If I become interim champ, he's still gonna have a belt too. It's gonna be champ versus champ, an even bigger fight. With UFC 310 fast approaching, Rachmanov has remained eager to stay on the card, actively calling for a matchup with former welterweight champion Kamaru Usman as a potential solution. While Usman has expressed interest, no official decision has been made on whether the UFC will create an interim title fight for this event. Rachmanov's management team has confirmed that negotiations to keep him on the UFC 310 card are ongoing, with Usman likely a top choice if the promotion agrees to the interim title. Meanwhile, Muhammad has brushed off Rachmanov's calls for an interim bout, countering that it's only six weeks, and he believes the championship fight should proceed without creating an interim title. Yet Rachmanov's point about the length of recovery for this type of injury is backed by past cases in the UFC, which could influence the promotion's decision. While there were initial rumors that UFC 310 might feature Alex Pereira versus Magomed Ankalaev as a replacement headliner, these were later dispelled, leaving the main event slot uncertain. With Rachmanov's continued push for a high-stakes interim title bout, all eyes are on the UFC to see if they will shake up the welterweight division at UFC 310. Following his electrifying knockout win over Max Holloway at UFC 308 in Abu Dhabi, Ilya Topuria has landed in the heart of Barcelona, or at least his likeness has, thanks to a new mural honoring Spain's rising MMA star. The mural, crafted by local street artist Alberto Leon, depicts Topuria mid-swing with a powerful overhand right. This tribute to El Matador joins the ranks of UFC fighters who have inspired street art in their home countries. Over the years, we've seen murals celebrating fighters like Israel Adesanya, Robert Whittaker, and Alexander Volkanovsky in Australia and New Zealand, as well as Paddy Pimblett, Molly McCann, Leon Edwards, and Tom Aspinall in England. Now, with Topuria's mural in Barcelona, Spain is showing similar recognition for one of its fastest rising sports icons. The mural's placement allows visitors to interact playfully with the image, positioning their own faces or fists to appear as though they're sharing the ring with Topuria. Alberto Leon's work is known for creative and bold stencil graffiti, often designed to play with the surrounding space. In his Instagram post about the mural, Leon described Topuria as an example of overcoming, sacrifice and discipline, calling him a warrior in life and in sport, and praising his steel mentality. Leon referred to the mural as his little tribute to the number one of the UFC, and a token of gratitude to Topuria, whom he views as a legend and source of inspiration. Topuria's star power is clearly on the rise in Spain. Although he lives in Madrid, his fanbase is expanding nationwide, with Barcelona now embracing him as a Spanish sports hero. Topuria has expressed interest in a homecoming fight at Madrid's iconic Santiago Bernabeu Stadium, and his increasing popularity suggests it could be a massive draw. Meanwhile, UFC CEO Dana White has voiced a strong interest in bringing the UFC to Spain in 2025, noting that finding an available venue will be crucial but that it's a high priority for the promotion. Wherever the UFC lands in Spain, Topuria's participation would add a level of excitement that could cement MMA's place in Spain's sporting landscape.
Many believe a Spanish UFC event featuring Topuria could potentially have the same impact in Europe as Conor McGregor's breakthrough had in Ireland and the UK. As Topuria's mural in Barcelona becomes a symbol of his popularity, MMA's reach in Spain and Europe looks set to soar. In an unexpected twist, Alexander Romanov has been released from his UFC contract just days after securing a lackluster unanimous decision victory over Rodrigo Nascimento at UFC Edmonton on November 2, 2024. Romanov's fight was criticized by fans and analysts as one of the least engaging bouts of the year. While he walked away with a win, the low-energy performance didn't seem to help his case for a contract renewal, as revealed by UFC roster watch earlier today. Romanov's release has surprised some, particularly since he had achieved a strong record of finishing his opponents throughout his UFC career. Romanov, once considered a rising star in the heavyweight division, built considerable momentum early in his UFC career. Known as King Kong, he impressed fans with his powerful grappling and achieved notable finishes, including an uncommon forearm choke victory over Marcos Rogerio de Lima, which showcased his unique grappling skills and generated considerable excitement around his potential. Romanov's initial success positioned him as a heavyweight to watch, particularly after four wins in his first five UFC appearances. However, his trajectory took a downturn following consecutive losses to high-level contenders Marcin Tibora and Alexander Volkov. Although he managed to regain some footing with a win over Blagoj Ivanov, the bout was widely panned as uninspired, and he appeared to be struggling with his conditioning. Romanov's most recent win over Nascimento did little to change the narrative around his recent performances. Many fans and analysts noted that Romanov looked out of shape and lacked the explosiveness that defined his earlier fights. Despite a UFC record of 7-3, with all three losses occurring in his last five bouts, his performances have steadily waned, suggesting that the 33-year-old Moldovan might need a change in approach, or organization, to reinvigorate his career. Interestingly, UFC CEO Dana White seemed to endorse the idea of Romanov moving on to a different promotion, with a remark that the Professional Fighters League PFL, should pick him up. This statement hints that while Romanov's current fighting style may not align with the UFC's emphasis on high-paced, exciting matchups, his skills and past performances might still attract interest from organizations like PFL, where a fresh start could allow him to re-establish himself and possibly address issues related to conditioning and strategy. Romanov's release highlights the challenges fighters face in maintaining peak performance and consistency within the UFC, especially as competition intensifies and roster spots are at a premium. His early displays of strength, combined with a diverse skill set, once marked him as a future contender in the division. However, as he struggled to maintain the physical and strategic sharpness that earned him a place in the UFC, his place in the organization became precarious. For Romanov, a potential move to a different promotion could offer a fresh start and the opportunity to redefine himself within the heavyweight division, free from the weight of recent underwhelming performances. As Romanov enters free agency, he has the chance to refocus and perhaps rediscover the athleticism and intensity that made him a formidable force early in his UFC tenure. The highly anticipated rematch between Islam Makachev and Armin Zarukyan is set to headline UFC 311 in January, marking one of the most exciting bouts in recent lightweight history. As Makachev seeks to further entrench his legacy as lightweight champion, Zarukyan comes hungry for redemption in what promises to be a clash between two of the division's most skilled grapplers and strategists. Makachev, a protege of the legendary Khabib Nurmagomedov, has steadily risen to the top of the UFC's lightweight ranks demonstrating not only his trademark wrestling acumen but also marked improvements in striking and overall fight IQ. His journey to the title has seen him take on and decisively defeat elite competition, with his most recent title defense against Dustin Poirier at UFC 302 underscoring his dominance. Entering that bout as a heavy favorite, Makachev controlled the fight and eventually submitted Poirier in the fifth round silencing any doubts about his ability to thrive in high-stakes matchups against the best the division has to offer. Over the past several years, 
he has refined his already formidable grappling techniques, blending them seamlessly with precise, powerful striking that has caught many opponents off guard. Zarukyan, meanwhile, is no stranger to high-level competition and has earned his title shot after a hard-fought journey through the UFC ranks. Known for his explosive wrestling and dynamic striking, Zarukyan's skill set has only grown since his last meeting with Makachev in 2019. That first fight, which saw Zarukyan push Makachev to his limits in a grueling, wrestling-heavy battle, ended in a unanimous decision win for Makachev, but it was far from an easy fight. In fact, Zarukyan was one of the few fighters to challenge Makachev's grappling at such a high level, and that bout left fans speculating about what a rematch might look like if both fighters continued to evolve. Since then, Zarukyan has not only gained invaluable experience but has also honed his striking game, making him an increasingly well-rounded and dangerous opponent. His split decision victory over Charles Oliveira in April solidified his position as the top lightweight contender, and the UFC title shot is a chance for Zarukyan to prove that he belongs among the elite in one of the most competitive divisions in the sport. For Makachev, this rematch isn't just another title defense, it's an opportunity to stamp out any lingering questions from their first fight and affirm his supremacy in the lightweight division. The Russian champion's remarkable grappling, reminiscent of his mentor Habib's style but with his own unique twists, has allowed him to impose his will on virtually every opponent. However, he will need to draw upon his striking improvements and control of distance, as Zarukyan is no longer the relatively untested young fighter he faced back in 2019. From Zarukyan's perspective, this is a moment of vindication. He has repeatedly stated that he learned a great deal from his initial clash with Makachev, and he's eager to show the world just how much he has improved. Over nearly six years, Zarukyan has sharpened his skills to become a well-rounded athlete capable of capitalizing on even the smallest weaknesses in his opponent's game. His bout with Oliveira demonstrated his ability to handle high-pressure situations, and a victory over Makachev would not only secure him the title but would also allow him to rewrite the narrative from their first fight. The stakes of this rematch extend beyond the immediate implications for both fighters. For Makachev, defending his title yet again would further elevate him in the pound-for-pound -pound rankings, positioning him as one of the sport's most dominant champions. For Zarukyan, a win would signify the arrival of a new generation in the lightweight division and mark him as a force capable of overcoming even the most daunting challenges. It would also reinforce the belief that hard work, resilience, and evolution can bridge the gap against elite opponents. Fans are eagerly anticipating how both fighters will approach this high-stakes battle. Makachev's success has been built on his ability to control the pace, using his grappling to sap his opponent's energy and force them into defensive positions. Zarukyan, on the other hand, is known for his relentless pace and explosive power, which he may try to employ to disrupt Makachev's rhythm and exploit any openings in the champion's game. Beyond the technical aspects, this fight is also a psychological battle. For Makachev, carrying the expectations of his team, his fans, and his country, every title defense is a statement about his position at the top of the sport. For Zarukyan, overcoming the mental hurdle of facing a champion who defeated him once before adds another layer of complexity, though his newfound experience and confidence suggest he is prepared for the challenge. Michael Chandler's rematch with Charles Oliveira at UFC 309 feels like fate, a carefully scripted opportunity to take back what he believes is rightfully his. The top spot in the UFC lightweight division. After nearly two years of waiting and uncertainty, Chandler was initially hoping for a blockbuster matchup with Conor McGregor. That fight seemed like a career-defining chance to face one of the biggest names in MMA. But with McGregor's unexpected injury and delayed return, Chandler was forced to pivot to a different path, one that ultimately brought him back to an opponent who, as Chandler sees it, stole his title dream. In an interview with the New York Post, Chandler reflected on the significance of this rematch with Oliveira. It couldn't have been scripted any better, Chandler said, describing how the fight represents more than just a chance to win, it's a shot at redemption. He vividly recalls their first matchup, where he fell short in a dramatic, back-and-forth battle. Oliveira managed to withstand Chandler's early onslaught, eventually securing a second-round TKO victory that crowned him as the lightweight champion. I had one goal when I got into this sport, to be the number one guy in the world,
to be widely regarded as the best. Charles Oliveira stole that from me, beat me fair and square, but he stole that dream from me. Now, I get the opportunity to right that wrong. This fight, scheduled to unfold under the bright lights of Madison Square Garden, holds a personal significance for Chandler. He's experienced the thrill of victory and the sting of defeat in the same arena, and the chance to fight Oliveira in this iconic venue feels almost poetic. For Chandler, it's more than just a rematch, it's a full circle moment in a career punctuated by both triumphs and setbacks. He's spoken openly about how much this venue means to him, describing it as the world's most famous arena, and acknowledging the gravity of fighting there. Madison Square Garden has been a place of extremes for me, Chandler shared. It's where I've experienced both career highs and devastating lows. Coming back here against Oliveira feels like everything is coming together for a reason. Beyond personal redemption, Chandler knows what this fight represents in the larger picture of the UFC lightweight division. With contenders like Islam Makachev and Armin Zarukyan climbing the ranks, a win over Oliveira would position Chandler as one of the highest-ranked fighters in the division. He pointed out how the Makachev vs Zarukyan fight, likely set for early 2025, will decide the landscape of the division. When I beat Charles Oliveira, I'll be the highest-ranked guy in the lightweight division not named Armin Zarukyan or Islam Makachev, Chandler explained, highlighting his ambition to challenge the winner of that bout for a title shot. Already looking ahead, Chandler confirmed he plans to be cage-side to watch the Makachev vs Zarukyan fight, scouting out his next potential opponent. I'll be right there, watching that fight closely, to see who I'll be facing for the title," he revealed, expressing his determination to seize every moment that brings him closer to his championship goal. This isn't just another fight for me, this is a crucial step in my journey to the top. Since joining the UFC, Chandler has quickly become one of the promotion's most talked about athletes, captivating fans with his explosive fighting style and willingness to take on the toughest opponents. His journey, however, has been anything but smooth, from the disappointing losses to the postponed McGregor fight. Each setback, Chandler believes, has only fueled his desire to climb back to the top and prove his mettle in the octagon. He's also candid about the mental preparation that goes into facing someone like Oliveira. Oliveira is no ordinary opponent, Chandler admitted. He's resilient, he's dangerous, and he knows what it takes to be a champion. I'm coming in fully prepared knowing that this fight could very well define the rest of my career. The respect is mutual, as Oliveira has also acknowledged the difficulty of their first fight and expressed understanding for Chandler's decision to wait on the McGregor bout, noting, he has a family to provide for.